uh, defendant Alec Baldwin's motion limine to preclude inadmissible cumulative expert testimony. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. And if you'd like, I can also address the Montoya case that you said you'd like to revisit. No, if you'd like I'll to do that first that. or later. I'll wait. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, Your Honor. Your Honor, we've moved to exclude cumulative experts and witnesses that the state has intended to call and put on their witness list. 44 fact witnesses, 13 expert witnesses. We have an eight-day trial, five or six days for the state, many of them duplicative for medical experts, multiple gun experts, multiple experts on multiple issues. And we're in this impossible situation, Judge, where we're a day and a half away from the start of this trial. And we have no idea the order of witnesses they intend to call, which of the witnesses they intend to call. It's severely challenging our ability to present a fair defense, to present and prepare for the witnesses that they intend to call. This is the time and past the time for the state to say, this is the case they intend to put on, these are the witnesses they intend to call, and give us some transparency into how this trial is going to be conducted, so that can be conducted in an orderly way with witnesses that we're prepared for and on notice of. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm not quite sure how to respond to that. Um, so, <clears throat> Brian Carpenter is a necessary witness. Kent Jorgensen is a necessary witness. Paul Jordan, I'm going to decide whether or not I think I can cut him. Um, I can't make that decision at this moment. Um, the Hagues are necessary witnesses. Piet is a necessary witness. Ziegler is a necessary witness. Let me tell you why. Um, even though Mr. Baldwin told OSHA investigators there wasn't anything wrong with this gun, it worked fine, the problem with it was a live round, the defense is centered around the gun was modified, the gun didn't function properly, I've got, uh, how many video exhibits have I disclosed to the court? Forty? Uh, the reason that you've got so many is because that's how I prove to you that the gun was working fine, is because they're filming him and the gun works fine. He cocks it, it stays cocked. He decocks it, it decocks the way it should. He fires it, it fires. Uh, so my witness list and my experts are designed to deal with their defense. And that's what I'm supposed to do. That's what I'm allowed to do. So if they don't wanna hear from the Hagues and Ziegler and Mr. Pieta, who's coming all the way from Italy, then they can give up on the silly notion that the gun was modified and, and that it malfunctioned. But until they do that, uh, there's nothing I can do. Um, I did reach out to Mr. Spiro with a thought about whether or not we could stipulate to the testimony of Mr. Gillette. Mr. Spiro, understandably, uh, was not able to give me a quick answer because it was something that he needed to discuss with his client. And because Mr. Gillette lives in Virginia and is the explosives expert for the FBI, I couldn't just sit on my hands. Um, but uh, hope springs eternal. If, if we can come to a stipulation with regard to Gillette's testimony, I can strike Gillette. We may not call Dr. Carrillo now that we've heard from them. Finally, let's talk about transparency. Uh, that they're not pursuing the she died because she wasn't properly intubated theory. So we're going to hold Dr. Carrillo in abeyance uh, and assuming that this issue is never raised, as Mr. Spiro has indicated that it will not be, then she will not be called. Uh, but we certainly reserve the right to handle that uh, however we see fit. It's entirely possible that we are not calling Shannon Prince. Uh, we will have to call Geraldine Conway uh, because of the defendant's uh, obvious uh, public defense that he didn't pull the trigger. Um, and I don't believe that we're calling Mr. Primo. So that's the transparency that you get from me now.
just briefly, Your Honor. We've got Jorgensen testifying about set safety. We have Carpenter testifying about set safety. We have other people testifying about set safety. They want Mr. Jordan to come and testify about set safety in Montana. We'll deal with that separately. When you look at this witness list, 44 fact witnesses, 13 experts, four medical, four medical experts testifying. When you heard Mr. Spiro say, we are not challenging the quality of the intubation or the cause of death. This is a witness list that is ballooned far beyond what's even remotely possible in a trial of this length. And so we're asking for, it's a good start of the transparency, appreciate what Ms. Morrissey said, but we need a whole lot more of that in order to put on a fair and efficient trial and to be properly prepared for the witnesses that they intend to call or else we're going to have witnesses testifying over and over and over again about the same exact subject matter, which is exactly what we're allowed to move to exclude on the basis that it's cumulative and it wastes time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, first of all, I have not looked at the witness lists, so I'm not, I know the number because you all keep telling me the number, but I'm certainly not in a position to start telling the state which is a better witness for this testimony and which is a duplicative witness. This is their case, and they know how much time they have. You said you'd use one to two days of, to, of well, what is it, uh, eight days? Eight days? And so um, um, the state knows what they need to do. With respect to the roles and responsibilities of producers, that's already out. Brian Carpenter and, um, and Ken Jorgensen are not going to, he's going to be talking, Ken Jorgensen's going to be talking about um, the safety, uh, but he's not going to be getting into producers. And, and um, since uh, producer is out, Mr. Carpenter's going to be um, left to do firearm safety. So I'm not uh, uh, noted, and I'm sure it's noted by the uh, state. They're well aware of the time frame they asked, and I said no for more time. So denied.